news. Well, I wasn't there, but uh, I am reliably informed uh, <laughs> that you found some cabbages. Now, a lot of people would sort of turn up their noses at cabbages, and a lot of people would wonder, well, why on earth should we talk about cabbages um, in, in a creation um, in a creation uh, program? Well, cabbages are very interesting because Richard Dawkins says that cabbages are a good example of evolution. And what he was meaning was, well, supposing you went to the green grocer or to the fresh food market and you bought these things. Now, there's a, a interesting vegetables there. There's some um, cabbages, there's some cauliflower, broccoli. Uh, the one in the bottom left-hand corner is not a turnip. That's actually a kohlrabi. And Brussels sprouts, I'm sure you're all familiar with. And... Uh, but the one at the bottom right-hand corner there is very, very trendy stuff. That's kale, considered to be one of those new superfoods. Now, you might have six vegetables there, but in fact, you've actually only got one species of plant. Would you believe, right? Brassica oleracea, one species of plant. So could there have been any evolution? Well, you only have one species. Nothing's changed whatsoever. It's um, even better than all being one kind. <laughs> You've only got one. So no evolution there at all. So how did we get all of this variety? Well, we do need to go back to the sort of plants that um, our colleagues found over in Folkestone and you can find growing around the UK in uh, wild places. This rather weedy, unappetizing looking plant is actually cabbage and it grows in other places as well uh, it grows in, in Europe and uh, other places as well and in fact the Romans found this so it's not new and at our Jurassic Ark site we have this lovely mural describing uh, the history of all these different types of cabbages and the variety of them showing that these are all one kind and they are also a brilliant example of selection but not evolution. So selection is a real process, but it's not evolution. So how did we get all of this variety? Well, it depends on whether the selection, the selecting agents who are local farmers in various places uh, all over the world have concentrated on various uh, interaction or variations rather on the stems and leaves or on the flowers. They are a flowering plant. We might not think of cabbages as having flowers, but they do. Uh, they're a typical flowering plant. So what if you concentrate on variations in the stems and leaves? Well, that's how you get all these uh, different variations of these things. So cabbages, what classical cabbages um, or savoy cabbages, which are a variation on that, are really the leafy head of the plant. And... <clears throat> Uh, over the years, farmers have selected out the ones that have the biggest, thickest, most leafy uh, head of the plant, and you end up with classical-looking cabbages. If you don't uh, concentrate so much on making a big, thick, round head with lots of um, uh, leaves, but rather look at a more spread-out sort of structure, you get kale but it's basically the same thing. It's cabbage leaves with that nice sort of crinkly edge, which is um, rather distinctive. If you concentrate on the, um, the stems where you've got a whole lot of uh, little buds rather than on the leafy head, that's how you get Brussels sprouts. So on one stem, you'll get a whole lot of little clusters of leaves. And kohlrabi is interesting. That's the stem of the plant, which is uh, expanded at the bottom. So that's not a root vegetable, that is actually the stem of the plant. So variations on leaves of stem, leaves and stems, and you can get some quite extreme um, variations if you just keep on selecting for um, stronger and stronger characteristics. Now, if you really get carried away with the uh, stems, you can get them to grow tall and strong and you end up with what's called Jersey cabbage or sometimes walking stick cabbage because you can literally grow these uh, and then uh, <clears throat> uh, cut them and, and dry them out and they're quite strong. They're strong enough to be walking sticks. 
So amazing variation in cabbages. Now, what about if you concentrate on the flowers? Well, literally cauliflower and broccoli are just variations on the, uh, on the developing flower buds and they're sort of extreme examples of um, the uh, developing flower buds. Very interesting. So um, again, selecting agent being local farmers have concentrated on one particular characteristic and just reinforced and reinforced it and reinforced it. But no evolution, still the same species. And uh, if you don't like cabbages to eat, well, you might be able to enjoy them just to look at. These are not flowers. This is actually ornamental cabbage. Now, cabbages do have uh, other pigments besides green in them. They have um, uh, these uh, reddish colored uh, pigments. And, and you may have even seen the reddish colored broccoli or reddish colored uh, cauliflower in the, uh, in the markets just for a bit of variation but you can breed uh, ornamental cabbages which are partly pink and partly green and they're quite pretty and I've, I've even seen whole garden pools of these and they're, they're very pretty. So they, these are not flowers. So even if you don't like cabbages to eat, you can still enjoy them. But remember all of that variation, all one species. So definitely no evolution involved there. And Professor Dawkins is right and the creator, uh, Professor Dawkins is wrong, the creator is right. This is real selection, but it's not evolution.